Well, the design of components using the damage tolerance concept is based on periodic inspections. And inspections interval must be smaller than the time the maximum undetectable crack needs to grow until the failure of the component. Such uh, inspections intervals uh, can be defined uh, often from operational experience, but lately almost more to do fracture mechanics approach approaches. The current state of knowledge is that crack growth in Europe in real components is often over conservative. When I consider the behavior of short cracks and the crack growth emanating from deep shut notches, uh, it gets even more conservative. <coughs> uh, that implies that there must be differences in the uh, crack propagation rate from laboratory specimen to real components. To investigate now these differences, uh, we machined single edge notch bending specimens uh, where we generate a notch due to wire electrical discharge machining. And to get the deep shot notch, we uh, use a razor blade cutting rig. These specimens are then tested in a resonant testing rig using a point bending mounting. And the specimens are compression pre correct so that uh, I can exclude uh, crack closure effects at the start of the experiment. Uh, the crack propagation measurement was done with the direct current potential drop technique. So, cyclically loaded components live longer than expected. But why? We found uh, four main reasons. The first is uh, residual stresses. The second is uh, overloads. <laughs> the third, small loads. And last but not least, downtime. So let's start with the residual stresses. What is here the difference between laboratory specimen and real components? Specimen are mostly free from residual stresses. Uh, required for lifetime enhancement is that I have residual compressive stresses. What is the region of such residual stresses? Uh, manufacturing, due to metal forming, heat treatment, machining, or surface treatment processes like shot painting, deep rolling, or laser shot treatment. For example, of the influence of residual compressive stresses, uh, we put such a SCB specimen in a, into a rolling mill and create a uh, residual st uh, stress distri distribution with uh, high compressive residual stresses near the edges. Then we introduce the two millimeter deep notch and make a, 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 a investigate the long crack threshold of this specimen. In addition, we do the same uh, at the specimen without residual stresses. Here we receive a long crack threshold about 11 megapascal square meter, and the long crack threshold is about yeah, 11. Uh, then the same uh, constant load delta K increasing test with the specimen with residual stresses, and the long crack threshold increase about 450 is about 450 percent higher than the specimen without residual stresses. So the next reason, overload, is the difference specimen to real component that in real components I have no constant load amplitude. I have load amplitudes looks like here. Some higher loads, some lower loads. Uh, what this required here for lifetime enhancement is that I have a tension overload. Uh, to investigate the influence of a single tensile uh, or compress compressive overload, uh, we did again uh, constant load that <coughs> decay increasing tests with a stress ratio of minus uh, 0.5. We start with 
uh, stress intensity factor range with 14 megapascal square root meter and uh, applied no overload here. So it's a reference specimen. Then, you know, it's the first compressive overload. Here again, we start with the same loading conditions till we reach a uh, delta K of 18 megapascal square root meter. And then we apply a compressive overload which was three times higher than the primary load amplitude. Afterwards, we finished the experiments with the initial load amplitude. And as you can see here, there's no measurable uh, effect. Then the tensor overload, the same start parameters. Here we, at 18 megapascal, we apply a tensile overload, which was three times higher again. And as you can see here, I receive a significantly drop in the effect propagation rate, which is about 100 times lower than uh, before the tension overload. Uh, for a short summary of this overload, compressive overload, no influence on track propagation. And tensile overload, significant retardation of the crack propagation rate. And uh, this, this example, uh, increase of lifetime of about 40%. Okay, the next reason, uh, small loads. Here is the same reason as the overloads. I have no constant load amplitude in the real component. Again, the same reference specimen. And then uh, we start to build up an oxide layer at, the, at 18 megapascal square root meter with a <coughs> stress intensity, intensity factor range of 9 megapascal square root meter, which is lower than the uh, threshold. And here we apply uh, 34 million cycles. Then we uh, go on with the uh, initial load amplitude. You can see I receive again a significant drop of the crack population load. Uh, to investigate now, or we investigate now two different specimens uh, of this, this such specimens where we uh, apply a thin gold layer uh, on the fracture surfaces. Then we use the ion slicer to prepare those specimens. And then I have done a look. Here there is this white line is the applied gold layer. Here you can see some removed material and the, the specimen. Uh, this is a look perpendicular to the fracture surface. And I now compare those two specimens. In the left picture, you see uh, uh, a, a load with, with 7 megapascal square root meter and 200,000 uh, 200, uh, uh, load cycles applied. And in the right, uh, the oxide layer was built up with, with 9 megapascal square root meter and uh, 33 million load cycles. And you can see here, uh, uh, under this, this white line, under the gold layer, the dark gray area. This is our oxide layer. And this is much higher, also only much higher than in, spe uh, in specimen B than in specimen A. That implies that the, the oxide layer depends, or the, the thickness of the oxide layer depends on the number of load cycles and on the load amplitude. <coughs> so and finally, the last reason, downtime. What is the difference specimen to real component? In real components, I, also, I, hope, I have also downtime, means no load amplitude. And also this affects the crack propagation rate, as you can see. To investigate, we start here again with a constant load the load ratio from, of minus 1. We start with delta K 40 megapascals and after uh, at, at 7.2 megapascals uh, we stop the experiment, uh, remove the specimen and uh, again came in the testing week and restarted immediately. We 
you can see here, you receive a, a smooth curve, so there's no effect. <coughs> Other when I remove the specimen and uh, leave the specimen in Engen there for two weeks and start then the experiment, or continue the experiment, then I have a drop in the effect propagation rate. Not as high as uh, the former effects, but measurable. So we, we expect that this uh, effect is uh, also due to the build-up of an oxide layer <coughs> on ambient air. So to avoid this, we, we made the same experiment and put the specimen into water for two weeks. But also here is a, a drop in the direct propagation rate uh, to see. So uh, the next uh, a reason for uh, a reason for us was that it uh, can be that uh, the strain aging, so-called strain aging effect, uh, that where uh, carbon deposits on dislocations. And to avoid this strain aging effect, we did the same experiments and put the specimen for two weeks in liquid nitrogen. But as you can see, the effect is even higher than before. So when I have a look on the uh, different fracture surfaces and the crack uh, propagation rate in comparison, you see that the uh, crack propagation rate in nitrogen is much lower for a long time than in the uh, in water or in air. And when I have a look on the fracture surfaces, I see a really big black uh, oxide layer. And, uh, yeah. Good. Uh, to, to summary those effects, uh, residual stresses, uh, if, they, if uh, residual compress, compressive stresses decrease the crack curve rate, they lead to higher lifetime. Uh, in small scale specimen, there are often no residual stresses left. Overloads, tensile overloads can lead to a significant perturbation of crack growth. Compressive overloads, not. Uh, small loads uh, also reduce the crack propagation rate due to the buildup of crack closure, oxide crack closure. And finally, yeah, also downtime can influence the crack growth in the near threshold region. So, thank you for your attention. Thank you.